So let's get started. I know we'll have a couple more people trickling in, but I figured we'll kick it off. I want to be mindful of everyone's time today since I'm sure you guys are juggling school and everything else that's going on. So um, just to welcome everyone, my name is Dr. Jessica Syed, and I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at Rowan. And I'm so happy you're joining us today for our conversation with our Dean of Students. I think this will be the best session so far if you guys have visited <laughs> our other virtual event sessions. Um, I know we are seeing some familiar names. You've already said hi to a couple of people um, who participated in our virtual accepted student week about two weeks ago now. Um, and we have a whole nother host of events throughout the month of May. So hopefully you guys are staying connected with us. It's great to be able to virtually connect with you. We know that you can't, um, that you can hear us and see us, but we can't see you or hear you. So the best way to communicate is if you look on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see Q&A. So if everyone wants to practice, if you guys want to write in, um, let's say if you are an accepted student, maybe you're a prospective student, if you guys are in high school or transfer students, um, tell us where you're going to school right now if you have been admitted or not, um, and then give us, let's say a good recipe that you've been working on since I like you've been it. stuck at home. I'm a terrible cook, so I'm looking for good ideas, but I did try to make a chicken and asparagus dish, dish last night, and I didn't undercook anything, no one got sick, so. Very nice. It was pretty good, yeah, it was pretty good, I'm getting better. Let's see who we have in the room today. We're up to 11 people, so I know on your end, it seems a little quiet, like you're the only one in here, but you guys definitely aren't. All right, so we have Emerson making chocolate zucchini bread. That sounds awesome. Love it. Chicken parm. Yep. Got to love it, Joshua. Nice. I'll be coming to your house. <laughs> I really want to know who's cooking for us when we get back to campus. Nice. Chicken parm, cupcakes. I'm getting hungry. Cool. Awesome. So we have a sophomore in high school, some accepted students. It looks like we have students really from all over. This is great. This is awesome. Well, a special shout out to all of our accepted students. Congratulations to you guys. Um, we are really excited to see you on campus this fall um, and over the course of the month at all of our other virtual events as well. So um, accepted and enrolled. Nick, awesome. Happy to see that. Thanks for joining us. Class of 2024. Very cool. All right, so let's get started. Um, I know you don't want to really hear me talk as much as you guys are here to talk to Dr. Kevin Kett. So I will introduce him at this point um, and really turn it over to him and let him introduce himself. And we are going to rely on our students today to really make this session what you guys want. So take this time to ask whatever questions you have. Honestly, nothing's off limits. If you've been in our other sessions before, you know Kevin's a pretty cool guy. Um, so we really just want to um, make sure your questions are answered um, and you guys feel comfortable and can you know picture yourself being home at Rowan even though you can't get to campus right now. So I'll turn it over to Kevin at this point and then we'll open it back up to our students. Thanks, Jessica. I really appreciate uh, really appreciate your help. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, she has been just absolutely phenomenal. We're certainly in in uh, pretty unique times, and and some would say terrible times. And uh, one of the things that's unique about Rowan is that we just have such a passion for students, and we want them to be here, and we want to you know shake their hands and you know give them hugs and and just be who we are as as Rowan. And you know, sadly, we haven't been able to do that. And and Jessica's done a phenomenal job. Uh, of keeping us connected and that, that's the importance of this session for me um I, I look forward to people calling me kevin i know some people can't and you might have to call me dean ked or you might have to call me dr ked i want you to be comfortable but uh, for me i'm just a realist of you know my job uh, a lot of times when i when i'm in person sessions i say to students you know what what does the dean of students do what's the what's the purpose of a dean of students and most people think of me as the principal. They think of me as the guy that gets you in trouble. Um, and certainly, uh, I am responsible for the code of conduct, and and uh, uh, those folks report to me. Uh, but I also work with housing. Uh, but my main job is to try to help remove barriers uh, out of your way as a student. We know, again, particularly in these times, you're going to have stresses. You're going to have, you know, Emerson's joining us from Wisconsin, and some other people are are probably joining us from from long distance away. And and uh, sometimes you get a little homesick. Sometimes you uh, you need a question answered. You know, that's my job too. Uh, not that I know everything. Not that I can answer everything, but I can certainly point you in the right direction. Uh, just love to have fun with students. Love to be engaged, involved. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. I started when I was five years old, so I'm 35 years old. Uh, but but just just love uh, connecting. So um, yeah, there's a there's a question there about do I help with bullying and pressure? Um, yes, uh, and that's one thing that that's important to me. Uh, I talk a lot, and and, I, and I'll kind of do a stream of consciousness. And I really appreciate you guys asking questions. That's going to help us a lot. 
But one of the things that's important to me, uh, and thank you so much for being here, uh, it speaks volumes for you as, as students, you're going to have questions, you're going to have concerns. None of us really understand this thing called higher education. We throw a lot of acronyms at you. We throw a lot of terms at you. Uh, if you're a first uh, generation student, maybe you don't have a family who can who can talk about their experience in college. Uh, so when it comes to bullying and pressuring, absolutely. That comes through my office. I, I don't have a whole lot of patience and tolerance for that. Um, but we're, we're always going to focus on trying to be educational and trying to help people. Uh, but part of that is also understanding and, and what I try to help people who may be uh, putting peer pressure on others. Um, social norming is a pretty powerful thing. And so when you come to college, people are going to say, oh, college is about partying, about getting drunk and, you know, this and that and you know, all the things that you've seen in movies. And, and that's just not true. Certainly, there's absolutely a social component to college. Uh, we want you to, this to be the best four years of your life. For some of you, it might be five years of your life, depending on the on the program that you're in. Um, but we want it to be the best time of your life. And some of that's social and some of that's having just a great time. Uh, but it's about understanding that it's normal to be homesick. It's normal to struggle uh, with your classes. We have people that are 4.0 students that come and, and college is just very different than high school. Um, and so that that's normal to have those feelings. Uh, but your peers might make you feel like, oh, you don't have the, the right major. You don't have the right uh, activities or friend groups or, or those. Don't give into that pressure. Understand that uh, everybody's normal. Everybody's uh, just trying to get through the day. And um, and sometimes we we have people that will put pressure on you that that might seem like they're trying to intimidate you or bully you. That's not something we, we will tolerate here at Rowan. It's not who we are as people. And, and I haven't, uh, you know, I've been here a very short time. I've only been here for three months. And, and unfortunately, um, you know, those those have primarily been in COVID times, but I've been in higher education for 30 years. I've been at eight different institutions and I've seen a lot of that happen. Uh, and so I think it's a great question, but that's not who we are as a university. Uh, I will never paint. Uh, I always say to students, I'm never going to lie to you. I'm never, I'm, I'm always going to be truthful for to, with you. I'm always going to be real with you. So this isn't Pollyanna. This isn't utopia. Uh, things happen here. Your crimes happen here. Um, People, people put pressure on people. Uh, you know, so those kind of things happen. But this is not a place where that's that's really common. A uh, really great place. Students are incredibly involved. They're incredibly engaged. Huge volunteer program. Huge uh, helping others program. Uh, and so, yes, we have policies and procedures to deal with that. But um, don't see a whole lot of examples of that happening. So great question. I appreciate that. All right, students. So. I'm turning it back to you guys. We had our first awesome question. I'm going to start. I'll start off by asking Kevin a question, but we are definitely relying on you guys to make sure again, you guys are writing questions in. Um, you don't even have to talk to us. You can just type them in it makes it nice and easy. Yeah. Um, so my question for Kevin, I know you've been at a number of institutions and you recently started working at Roan and a lot of that time has been virtual, unfortunately. <laughs> But can you speak a bit, just in your short time here, about the sense of community and feelings of home that Rowan has compared to other institutions that you're familiar with? Yeah, there's there's no question. And I've uh, just to, to give you all a context, I've been everywhere from South Dakota to um, New York to New Jersey, spent most of my time uh, in the South, um, worked in Kentucky, North Carolina, Tennessee. Uh, I call Wisconsin home. Uh, that's where I went to high school. That's where I grew up. Uh, I was blessed enough to go to college on a, on a football scholarship. And so I have a lot of different perspectives, uh, student athlete perspective. I was a first generation student. Uh, this is a place where it really is about family. And, and one of the things, again, you'll learn about me is uh, I'm not here to tell you a story. I'm not here to just give you a brochure and say, oh, R Rowan is perfectly amazing. I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. Um, I I'm this place is incredible. The town is amazing. Uh, there's lots of things to do. There's lots of things to be engaged with. Um, but the, the community is, is about, we've got an amazing student government. We've got a, a student government that's uh, about 250 students strong. And one of the things that, that impressed me about the community is, you know, again, unfortunately, we're all dealing with COVID, um, but they continue to have their meetings virtually throughout the entire year. It would have been easy for them to just say, you know what, uh, we'll just we'll just give up and we'll try again next year. 
um, but they still stayed focused on how can we help students? How can we be engaged? Uh, we have things like student emergency funds, um, opportunities for those that are struggling to help. Um, you, you walk around campus and you, you know, this is a very active campus. Uh, you, you'll see people in the student center. We've got an amazing game room. Um, lots of clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. And if not, you know, if you if you think, hey, my passion is um, scrapbooking, I'm just throwing something out and we don't have that club, you can create it, you can start it. Uh, so just in the residence hall communities, lots of diversity there, lots of different uh, residential living environments, um, very much a community, very much caring about one another. Um, so that that's important. I think there's a, a good follow up question to that. If there is a connection between teachers and their students. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And I, let me see who's who's asked here. Oh, another great question. Uh, and I apologize. I don't want to destroy your first name. Uh, I, was, I skipped it too. I knew I wasn't going to pronounce uh, it. <laughs> area, area, area. Um, anyway, I, I, was, I just sincerely apologize. I know names are important and certainly don't want to destroy yours. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, refer to you as battle and I, I appreciate, uh, uh, appreciate you asking that question. One thing that's, that's in my notes that I wanted to make sure that I addressed is uh, absolutely. There's very strong connections and, and research tells us uh, that the students who are most successful in the college environment uh, make a connection with a mentor. That might be a staff member, that might be uh, a faculty member, that might be you know, someone, uh, an athletic coach, could be a lot of different things, uh, but making connections with, uh, with a mentor is critical. No question, our, our faculty are very connected to their students. There's lots of opportunities uh, to be involved in research labs, to get that hands-on experience, to uh, work with a faculty member, maybe to publish an article or to, uh, to do some research. Uh, but I think the one thing that, that's really shown that to me is, is what we're going through with COVID. We moved to an online, Rowan University is not an online university. We, we are a place where uh, we are passionate about meeting in person. We are passionate about who we are and, and very proud of who we are uh, from, a, from a people standpoint, from a, this is a family, this is a community, this is a place that really cares about one another legitimately. And so it was kind of a little bit of a struggle to move to that online community where uh, we're seeing each other through televisions and through virtual uh, but faculty members have been writing personal letters, have been sending emails, have been making phone calls to their students to say, hey, Jessica, how are you doing? Are you OK? I, I noticed that, uh, you know, you didn't turn in this assignment or, or maybe um, it's a little different. Are you OK? How can we work with you? So they're they're focused, of course, on the academic side. They want you to gain the knowledge. They want you to gain the skill sets that you're going to need to be in your profession or your career choice or to move on to the next level class. Uh, but it's more about caring about who people who people are and, and what they're doing. Uh, faculty are, are great. They, they give us a heads up if they see somebody uh, maybe struggling with something in class. We have an amazing outreach network. Uh, where and that's that's important to know as you come to to Rowan, somebody might call you. Somebody might say, "Hey, uh, Emerson, how are you doing? Uh, how how are you feeling?" Um, and that's okay. That that shouldn't scare you. That shouldn't say, "Oh my gosh, uh, why is the dean talking to me?" Um, it, it's about us caring. It's about us wanting to help you. And and so when somebody asks you those questions, be honest with them. You know, if you're having an amazing day. Tell them you have an amazing day. If you're struggling, tell them that you're struggling. So, yes, the relationships between faculty is is very strong with students, but the same thing is true of staff. You'll see our president walking around campus. Uh, our president, I'm sure you've you've heard or have researched, uh, makes his own hot sauce. Uh, and and uh, I haven't tried it yet. I'm looking forward to trying it. I, I've heard that uh, his hottest version is um, is pretty powerful, and uh, you might want to think twice about uh, getting his hottest hot sauce. But uh, we've got a, we've got a president, Dr. Hushman, who is incredibly engaged, who is incredibly involved, cares deeply about students, not just again something that he says really uh, in meetings will uh, make sure that the student government voice is being heard is, is uh, specifically coming to the table. So it's not just faculty, but find that mentor, find that person who cares about you and uh, develop that relationship. It'll be powerful. 
Yeah, that was a great question from Aureus. Thank you for the pronunciation. Um, and you asked a, a follow up to that too, like our staff, and I would extend that back to faculty understanding and down to earth. And I was sharing with Kevin before you guys joined us. So I actually just graduated with my doctorate. I'll be doing virtual commencement this Saturday. And I went over to campus during my lunch break today to take some pictures in my cap and gown um, just around campus. And I actually saw President Hushman getting out of his car, walking into his office with the mask on. And he, I don't think that's who I am, but I yelled across campus. Dr. Hushman, will you take a picture with me? And he said, sure, do you want the mask on or off? So we took a photo together, it was pretty cool. So up until this session, it was the highlight of my day. Um, but I think you'll see that really around campus that people are extremely caring. Um, I'm also an alum of the institution. And as a student, I always felt that my concerns and my voice was being heard and now working on the other side of the desk and being in meetings where we're talking about student groups that's absolutely true. Um, I received an email yesterday about one of my students just to check in. Her advisor was having a hard time getting in touch with her. It ended up her internet was down at home for a couple of days and she was emailing us back outside of Starbucks, tapping into their Wi-Fi. She didn't have a connection at home. But I think those little things really go a long way and just show the sense of community that we have. And I think for the most part, everyone is pretty you know, down to earth, approachable, relatable. Um, that's really important to me to always be that way for my students, Kevin, I'm sure you would echo the same, and I think you'll really get a sense of that across campus. You, you really will, and and uh, you know it goes back to uh, it kind of ties into a little bit of Fabrizio's question of you know what does it take to be successful here? Uh, anybody who's been uh, accepted to Rowan uh, is absolutely capable of being an outstanding student. We know that that's why we accepted you. Uh, we have belief and confidence in you. Uh, sometimes students don't have belief and confidence in themselves and, and that, that becomes part of the educational process, but we believe in you, we have confidence in you. So things to remember for success for Brizio is to do exactly that. And, and uh, I think uh, Reyes uh, made a mention too of, you know, it's hard for me to, to connect with adults if they're not down to earth. Um, you've got to, and this is hard, it's difficult, I, I get it, but you've got to be the one to, you know, take that first risk, just as Jessica was saying, to say, hey, Dr. Hushman, would you take a picture with me? Well, most people would say, oh, well, that's the president, he's too, you know, he's too busy, he's too important, etc. That's not who we are. That's that's why I love people to call me Kevin. Uh, I always say to, to students, you don't care if I have a doctorate, you don't care uh, what my educational background is, you care if I can help you, and if I can, great, and if I can't, Please point in the direction of someone who can. That's what we believe. We, we really believe in let's not let false barriers get in our way. So to be successful, you got to be willing to ask questions. You got to be willing to say, hey, you know what? I'm not doing well right now. I, I don't understand this concept that we're talking about in class or I need a tutor or um, I, I don't I don't feel well. I need to go to the wellness center. Or I might need some mental health uh, assistance, um, whatever it might be for you. A, if that's OK. Again, going back to this whole system of normalcy, you might have uh, people around you that are saying, oh, I'm perfect, I'm fine, I'm not homesick, I don't miss my parents. Uh, well, first of all, we know that's not true. Uh, we know that people are just putting a good face on. Uh, but be willing to ask those questions, be willing to reach out. Um, to be successful, have a plan of action. You, you got to have a plan of action. If you think that you're going to come in and this is going to be just like high school, then you're going to have a whole lot of culture shock. You're going to have a lot of free time on your hands. You're going to have a, a ton of time during the week. So schedule your study sessions. Schedule the time uh, that you're going to write your papers or go over your notes or read your chapters. Um, if you didn't do a whole lot of reading in, in high school, you're going to do much more reading in college. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that you need to know to be successful, but schedule those times, plan those times so that you can then, whether it's in the evening, in the afternoon, participate in a club or an organization you like, or go do some social things uh, if you've already planned out your work. For me, and I, I've said this my whole career, and it sounds just so basically simple, but for me, top students understand the concept of doing the right things at the right times. And it's, it's really that easy of who we are as an institution. So, when it's time to go to class, go to class. Yeah, it might be eight o'clock in the morning and the last thing you wanna do is roll out of bed. Uh, go to class, um, be present. Uh, faculty members love students that are engaged in their classes. Um, we're all human beings and we all have egos. And so this isn't a negative, but uh, if I've got a student that's in my class and they're engaged and they're asking questions, um, then that student's gonna do much better than the student that's you know sleeping in the back row or, or never shows up to class. So 
participate, be engaged, be involved, do the right thing at the right time, go to class, um, do your assignments, turn in your work, uh, study and, and be prepared for your test. When it's time to eat, eat, you know, be healthy, be, you know, make sure, and I'm not, trust me, if you, if you see me, I'm a, I'm a big dude. I'm, you know, uh, health food is not in my diet. So I don't mean healthy in, in that way, but, uh, you know, take care of yourself, get, get the rest you need, get the, the food that you need. Um, We've got great workout facilities. We've got wonderful intramural programs, things to get involved with. Uh, so that that's successful. Do the right thing at the right time. When it's time to have fun, have a little fun. Again, whether that's uh, joining a fraternity or sorority, whether that's joining a, a club or organization, a faith-based organization, uh, might be being engaged in your residence hall or being engaged with uh, student government. Get involved. Uh, I was saying, you know, don't be too cool for school. I'm showing my age by show, by saying that, but uh, get involved. Be be engaged. Be a, a person that asks questions, is comfortable asking for help, and uh, you, you're going to do just fine. And and I will tell you, just being a part of this session and it has nothing to do with me. I, I just, uh, you know, Jessica knows that uh, I just love these sessions because I'm so passionate about students. I just just love talking to students and just hearing their perspectives so that I can better advocate for them. But just by being at this session and other virtual sessions that you've attended, that says to me, you're ready to be successful. You're ready to be a top student because you're getting that information. You're asking your questions. You're being engaged. That's going to go a long way. That's great. Um, and some advice I heard from when I was a student from that dean of students had told me what you put into it is what you get out of it. So when you guys come to college, it's a brand new chapter. It's a whole new experience. Get involved. Try something new. I know when I was in college many years ago, I won't share how long ago, I went to an improv club meeting. I know nothing about improv. Yeah. It was not my thing, but I left there knowing, hey, I'm checking that off my list, but I tried it. I met some cool people. So just try really anything. Now's the time to explore. Um, and we're here to really challenge and support you. So we know you're going to fail at some things. You're going to find some things that you're not great at or you don't enjoy, but now's a really great time to Try some different things, try something new. Um, and also remember that if you're nervous and you're afraid, everybody else is too, All, especially first year students coming in, everyone may be acting cool that they're not, but everybody's anxious and nobody knows what they're yes. doing. So feel you know, comfortable in that, that you are certainly not the only one feeling that way. I know for me, that always helps. Um, and I always try to tell that to incoming students. All right, so we had a really good question. Um, and I think you know, this applies even on a larger scale, but if you want to talk a bit, Kevin, about some of the resources and accommodations that we have for students, um, students with disabilities, academic resources, I think this is incredibly helpful. And I'm really proud that Rowan does such an incredible job with the different resources we have. Yeah, ac excellent question. Whomever answer, asked that question, that's that's amazing. Uh, we've got incredible resources. Uh, our student success uh, program is, is incredible. Uh, and they've got a, an amazing team. So that the important thing, again, I'm going to keep going back to this doing the right thing at the right time. Uh, this is not the time to um, try to put your plans on hold. So let's say you have uh, an IPA um, that, 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 you're, that you've got going on right now. You've got a, a plan that you're working in, in high school. Don't give up on it. We've got resources here to uh, get you accommodations to help. Uh, that's important. Sometimes people will, you know, they'll come to college and say, well, I don't want that stigma or I don't want to you know, have to continue that or I'll stop taking my medic medicines because I'm feeling good. This is not the time to do that. You know, we don't put big bulletin boards up to say, hey, Kevin Kett is is now working with Jessica in a capacity. We, we treat that with confidentiality and with respect. Um, but that office will send notes to faculty members to say, hey, this is an accommodation that uh, that Kevin needs or uh, and the faculty are, ma are amazing with it. And that might be a short term accommodation that might be a long term accommodation. Uh, we have many different students using those services. So uh, it's important again to to speak up for yourself, advocate for yourself. Uh, don't feel like that's a stigma because it's not uh, same thing with tutoring. We have 4.0 students that go to tutoring. Uh, and I would argue that one of the reasons that they continue to be 4.0 students is because they're going to tutoring. But uh, for me, and, and this is a little bit of uh, of higher ed heresy, uh, but for me, it's not about that 4.0, or it's not about that that number. 
It's about, are you becoming a better person? Are you becoming a more educated person uh, because of your experience? So I know some students that are uh, 2.5 GPAs that are amazingly talented, uh, that are incredible and working very hard. Uh, so don't, don't get caught up in the number, but be, be willing to ask for help. Be willing to say, eh, you know, I'm not getting this chemistry or uh, uh, composition isn't my top subject. Uh, we've got incredible tutoring services. We've got people that, that care deeply about you. That's a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Um, so it's important, uh, whether it's through the wellness center and counseling, whether it's through tutoring, whether it's through uh, the accommodations uh, staff, whether it's residential living, we've got all kinds of people who are here to help you, to give you services that you need. Uh, and that's uh, that's something that you should take advantage of and, and speak up about, not, not be fearful. And I'll plug another virtual session, but actually tomorrow, the 8th at 2 o'clock, our Academic Success Center, who oversees all of our disability resources, our tutoring center, Academic Success Center, um, they'll be having a separate presentation. So I would highly recommend attending. I think every student can benefit from the services that they offer. They also do something that's called academic coaching. I learned about it recently, and I think there isn't a single student who would not benefit from that. So academic coaching is different than tutoring in that it's not about a specific subject or a course. It's really general time management skills, study skills, that transition between high school and college, and I'm going to pass this off with our next question, um, is, can be really difficult for students. It is very different high school versus college, and having an academic coach just to help you along the way is really, really helpful. So we did just get a great question. We have someone who's going to be a college freshman in the fall of 2021. <laughs> Awesome. We'll see you in a year. And wondering how to make that transition between high school to college easier. How do we do that for students? What do we um, do, especially for first year students? Because again, we know that first year is really, really important. Yeah, there, there are so many incredible programs to be involved with. We, we've got uh, transition programs. Uh, again, we throw a lot of acronyms at you, but uh, we've got an ASCEND program. We've got uh, some bridge programs that help students transition uh, from from high school to college. But most, you know, most of the vast majority, you know, we're 20,000 students. So a vast majority of the students uh, are not a part of those programs. You can be involved in a residential living learning community. You can be involved in a uh, 101 course, uh, which is, is kind of a, a not orientation in the sense of, of what you think orientation in the summer, but just kind of an acclimation to the university. Uh, as Jessica talked about, there, there, there are so many different sessions uh, with uh, being able to learn skill sets, be they time management, be they note taking. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the piece for, for transitions are that we're going to have a lot of, of activities and programs when you first come to campus uh, in your welcome week and your orientation uh, programs. Uh, again, don't be the don't be the student that just sits in your room and says, "Oh, I don't need that." Oh, I, you know, I did fine in high school, and I'm going to be okay. It, it's not always about um, that specific subject matter. It's about meeting friends. It's about uh, seeing people who are going through the same scenario as you are. It's about uh, making those uh, lifelong connections that are important uh, because we're all, you know, we all, and I'll, I went to college in the eighties. Huh? Uh, I took it, I took a typewriter to college. That's, that's how old I am. I didn't, there wasn't this thing called a computer that, that my family could afford. Um, and so that's, that's how old I am. But uh, even today, the, the importance of making those connections with people and being able to rely upon, um, you know, when I'm having a bad day, I'm having a sad day. I went, I went to college in South Dakota. It was 12 hours away from home. Uh, so those friendships I made, those, those people I met during the orientation sessions, during, uh, uh, other activities that I was involved with were important. Uh, so the transition piece comes from orientation. It comes from uh, the events that we're going to plan in the first few weeks of your experience here. Uh, there's probably 20 things that you can do on any given day at Rowan. Uh, going to a, a movie, participating in a club or organization, uh, just a million different things that, that you can be doing. Get involved in those. That's part of the transition. That's not just to, you know, we don't want to just occupy your time. Uh, we want to, you know, those are intended to help you grow, help you uh, transition. So uh, what I would also recommend is not just uh, taking advantage of our program. So if you're, if you're coming a year from now, as opposed to the fall, make sure that, uh, you know, the classes that you're working with in, in high school uh, are focused on, on helping you become a better 
potential college student, but uh, engage in conversations just like this. Uh, you know, send an email to to myself or to you know if you want to be an engineer to an engineering faculty member and, and just ask questions. Um, you know, hey, I'm thinking about this or this is on my mind or um, you know, how how might I um, apply for some scholarships or those kind of things. Uh, ask those questions now because the more you can do to get that in your brain today, you're going to be successful uh, that year when some other students haven't thought about that. Uh, so lots of transition pieces um, inside the classroom, outside the classroom, uh, being a part of a residence hall. A lot of people say, well, gosh, why do you require us to live on campus for two years? That's an important piece of, of, of the university experience. That's part of the transition. Uh, it's being able to work through some difficult situations with your peers who are, who are doing the exact same thing. Uh, they're going through the same transitions you are. They're going through the same struggles you are. Um, and so that two-year residential requirement is exactly that. It's try to help you transition. It's to try to help you uh, have access to some resources, some uh, materials, be they, be they human, be they um, programmatic, et cetera, that, that can help you transition to the university. So lots of things going on there. Great question. That's great. Hopefully that, that answered. I think that was great. Um, we had another question about the diversity at Rowan, Kevin, if you want to touch a bit on it. Yeah, and it's it's something that I've been really impressed with. Diversity education has, has been um, a really strong part of my career and, and one of the things that actually attracted me to Rowan. Uh, we've we've uh, this is not, a, you'll often hear me talk about uh, not wanting things to be just a brochure item. Uh, Rowan has created a division uh, of diversity and equity and inclusion. Um, the resources are there, the staff is there, an incredible uh, team of, of individuals who are focused on uh, diversity in the broad based concept as well as the individual concept. So we have uh, we have an area that focuses on social justice. We have an area that focuses on first generation students. We have areas that focus on uh, students of color, black and brown students. Uh, and and it, one of the things that was exciting, in fact, I was just uh, on a phone call today. I'm a part of a, a Group that talks about diversity and inclusion on campus and uh, Rowan staff did a, an incredible piece on uh, health care and the the difference uh, the impact of COVID is having upon uh, underrepresented student or under under population underrepresented population not just students uh, but the impact the, the different impact that it's having on our black and brown communities and that was picked up by uh, an ND, NAACP organization, and now they want to apply for a grant uh, with our team. And so uh, having that community impact, having uh, the impact beyond our campus community, uh, lots of student organizations that are uh, involved with uh, underrepresented student populations, be it uh, the Divine Nine, which is our historically black fraternities and sororities, uh, we have all of the Divine Nine on campus. That's uh, that's very rare to find these days. Usually you have a number of organizations, but it's very rare to find all of the Divine Nine on campus. Uh, we've got an, an incredible student government who just uh, put a diversity focused position onto their executive board to uh, highlight those areas. Uh, so we can always do better uh, numbers wise uh, with diversity. Uh, and that's certainly something that we're committed to, uh, but I think we've got great programs. Uh, every uh, department, every division is responsible for uh, identifying their diversity plan and how they're uh, how they're going to help uh, focus and and help our students grow and develop in those areas. No question, it's been around forever. You guys understand this uh, as uh, as your generation far more than mine ever did. Uh, but you know, we're we're in a global society, and uh, we've got to be able to function in in that global society. And Rowan does a great job of focusing its education on uh, helping students understand, appreciate uh, that which makes us different, that which makes us similar, and, and how those interact with with each other, so we can be supportive of our entire community. We have a session on May 20th at one o'clock too. I'm just gonna keep plugging all these virtual sessions yeah. <laughs> that fit in, um, but we have a, it's called SJICR. So it's our Center of Social Justice, Inclusion and Conflict Resolution, which I know is a mouthful, but they oversee a bunch of our centers on campus. So we had a question about LGBTQ resources. They oversee our LGBTQIA plus center, our women's center, um, spirituality center, multicultural center. So there's a lot of different centers and resources for students and I can almost guarantee there's something for everybody. So if you guys are interested 
interested in just hearing more about that, the different programs and centers that they offer. Um, again, that's May 20th at one o'clock, another virtual session if you guys wanted to sign up for it and hear from some of the staff um, over in that office as well. Yeah, and I would highly recommend that. You know, Roxy's amazing and, and her team is amazing. Um, but in my areas, you know, even gender neutral housing, we, that's something that, uh, that we have on campus that many campuses don't have. And so, uh, that's when we talk about it, it, it blending throughout the entire university. It's not just one person's responsibility. It's an entire campus community. So that's a, that's a great. In fact, I'd love to attend that session too. I'll send as, a, as, a, as an attendee, <laughs> not as a presenter. I'll send you an invitation. Um, so we had a couple questions um, going back to academics. How do the professors teach? Are they just talking at you? Is this more like a lecture and you guys are just kind of sitting there? We have a student, Joshua, saying that one of his AP teachers also is a college professor and usually just taught at us most of the time. Um, and then Arias asked another great question about how do we keep in touch with our teachers, um, different staff on campus during a time like this? And really, even when you guys are on campus, how do you communicate with your, your professors? Yeah, great questions, and and unfortunately, the question about faculty, um, it's going to depend on the individual faculty members. Uh, I can say, for the most part, uh, and I meet with uh, with the academic deans twice a week. Uh, now we have great conversations. Uh, for the most part, it's going to be engaged. It's going to be more of a question and answer, more of a dialogue. Um, but depending on your major, depending on the, the course, some of your courses uh, more in your first year might be more lecture. They might be more you know, talking at you. And um, so it, it depends on the teacher's style. It depends on the faculty member style. Some uh, I, I'm very much when, when I teach, uh, it's always going to be engaged. It's never going to be uh, me talking at uh, folks. But there are some subject matters. There are some instructors who that's just their their comfort. And that's what lends itself to the to the subject matter. Um, and so uh, it's going to vary, but you'll find a vast majority, again, particularly as you get into your major, as you get into more of the classes that are focused on on what you want to do for your career, uh, they're going to be much more engaged. They're going to be, uh, you know, our classes are very small. Uh, it's really rare, uh, and Jessica would know this data better than I, but it's re really rare to find a class that's going to be more than 40 or 50 people, and even those are, are pretty rare. Um, but uh, that, that's not true of many universities. Many universities, particularly your freshman year, you're going to be sitting in lecture halls with three, four, five hundred uh, other people. Th that's not who we are. That's not the experience that we have. So um, very engaged, but, but instructor styles are going, to, are going to be very different. The one thing I will say with communication, and I certainly apologize for this, but uh, you, you're going to have to get a little bit comfortable with with us old folks in that email. Email is going to become your your method of communication, and and I know that that's not uh, that's not a great place for for your generation to be. You'd rather it be on TikTok and uh, Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, I know Facebook is now just for sending birthday wishes. Um, but that was all the rage not all that long ago. So so we, we get it. We understand uh, social media and, and Rowan has a great presence on social media, but that's just simply not how we communicate. Um, and it's to respect your privacy. I, you know, I, obviously I wouldn't send a, uh, a, 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 I wouldn't have a truck drive by. I wouldn't send a, uh, a TikTok message to Jessica saying, you know, hey, I need to talk to you about a conduct case. Um, so uh, part of what I like to tell people is email is your receipt. You know, when you go to, when you go to a store and you buy a, a TV, if you, if you want to have some repairs done on it or if something goes wrong, you've got your receipt to say, hey, this was our transaction. Well, the same thing is true about email. That's your receipt so that if I email you and say, hey, I'm going to give you a $500 scholarship and only $200 gets put in your account by mistake, you've got an email that says, wait a minute, uh, you know, Kevin said that I had a $500 scholarship so it's really important to to not only check that on a on a daily basis or multiple times a day but to know that that's that's the way that we we have our kind of our contract with each other our agreement with each other um, so get used to email it's i know it's archaic i know it's old um, but it's it is the way we communicate and, and lots of really good important information you know, we, we had uh, we just had uh, email go out about the cares act which is, you know, the Rowan and other institutions across the country. It's a federal program, but Rowan specifically got, uh, you know, $7.2 million to assist students and, and try to help them in this time of crisis. Uh, well, that information went out on email. 
And in the first day, we had 4,000 people uh, submit applications. So uh, you've got to check your emails. That's how we communicate. Email your professionals. They love it. They're, they're going to respond back to you. Now, it may take them a day or two, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a great way to, to communicate. And then just stop and use their office hours. Uh, a lot of students just, you know, you're, you're going to see on your syllabi this thing of office hours, and you're like, I, I don't even know what that means. Why would I ever use them? Just stop by. And, and again, I'll go back to this ego standpoint. I'm, I'm a woodworker. I love when people come in and say, hey, you know, let's talk about woodworking. Uh, find out what might be of interest to your faculty members. And, and certainly you, you, your priority is going to be to talk about class and how you can be successful in class. But you know, find a, uh, you know, five or 10 minutes to talk to them about something that they're passionate about or, or something you're passionate about. Um, use those office hours. They're important. Yeah, and I think the best part of so many of our days is when we do get to talk to students. So drop by, I think stopping in at office hours, like Kevin's suggesting, is such a great idea. Um, but email, yeah, definitely, definitely the way to go. Um, so to speak about class sizes, and we did have a question about how big the campus is, that ties in nicely. Um, our average class size at Rowan is just 20 students. So for those of you who are in our presentation this morning, you heard an overview about the campus overall, you know we're looking at about 20,000 students. We have about 16,000 undergrads. So we are mid-sized to a bit larger in terms of the overall campus, but that classroom experience probably feels similar to what you guys are used to in high school again depending where you went to high school but the biggest class you're really going to find here is about 35 40 students at the most so even our new academic building so if any of you have been on campus for a tour before the COVID crisis happened you got to see inside of some of our classrooms even our brand new buildings all of those classes are capped at about 35 40 students so we don't have any auditoriums that you're walking into like you see in the movies and taking classes so I think it allows you to really build that relationship with your faculty member where if you're one of 300 that may be a little bit more difficult. So I hope that also helps answer the size of the campus. Um, the physical campus itself, I always tell students you can probably walk from one end to another in about 20 minutes or so. Um, maybe I'm a fast walker. Our students always say everything's so far, but I don't think it's <laughs> particularly not far. Um, we do have a new area of campus that again, if you guys were on our session this morning, you heard about Roman Boulevard, which is a super cool downtown Main Street area yes. that's brand new. Five years ago, it didn't even exist. So I always say for students coming into Rowan right now, you guys are here at the right time because it's all that construction is done. Um, there is restaurants, shopping, entertainment. There's a really cool um, outdoor green area. They do festivals all summer. They do an ice skating rink in the winter. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on down there. Um, even to walk to all the way to the end of Rowan Boulevard, um, I'd say probably about 20 minutes from the heart of campus. So everything is pretty compact. We do have a shuttle system that runs a around our campus and to our Camden campus, which is located about 15 minutes away. We certainly have students who participate in it, but you can easily walk around campus. And I think um, our admission counselor this morning, who was on the presentation, said it reminds her of Goldilocks. So it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right. So if you are looking for that size that you can walk around and always see somebody that you know, but always see new faces too. I think we're that perfect in-between size. So when we are able to get back on campus, if you guys haven't been yet, I would recommend reaching out for a tour, coming to visit us. Um, we don't have any dates posted at this point since we're a little unsure when everyone will be able to get back on campus and see us. Um, but as soon as that happens, we'd love to welcome you guys. And we typically offer tours on a daily basis throughout the academic year and in the summer. So lots of opportunities to come and check it out yourself too. Yeah, and I, and I, I want to challenge uh, you all. So the I think maybe there's 11 or, or 12 of us on. I want to challenge you all. I want you to become the the things are looking up group. Um, it's one of the things that I'm trying to promote. Of one, it, it speaks to our current situation. Things are looking up. We're we're, we're going to be in a better place. No, we we don't know when. We don't know uh, what that's going to look like. But we're going to be in a better place, and we know that. So things are looking up there. But I also want it to be you. Know, things are looking up on campus, and and I know everybody loves their devices. But you know, we're we're walking around campus doing this kind of thing on our phones. You look up, say hi to people, engage people. Um, that that's that's really a, an important piece uh, as jessica said there, there's you can walk from one side of the campus to the other very very quickly but do it in a way where you're paying attention you're saying hello to people you're being engaged you're being involved that's going to help with your transition as well Great. So I do want to be mindful of time. I know we're just about at that 45 minute mark. I know we had a couple of questions that weren't yet answered. So if there are questions that we didn't get to, I know I saw a question about pet therapy that we didn't get to. Um, I'll quickly tell you, we do have an awesome pet therapy program. We've received a $3 million donation last year to start pet therapy 
right on our campus. It is an awesome resource. So I'm sure we'll be talking about that tomorrow in the Academic Success Center um, presentation or our Wellness Center presentation as well. But really cool resource if you're feeling stressed out and you just want to go and pet a dog for 15 minutes and make an appointment and just go over and do that. It's pretty cool. So not every school can can offer that. But if there are questions that you know you didn't get answered or you do want to connect with us, um, best way to get in touch after this presentation, I would say is emailing admissions at rowan.edu. Um, I will receive all those emails and either pass them on to Kevin or happy to answer them myself or connect you guys with who you need to connect to. So as we wrap up today, I'm just going to ask Kevin to give you one piece of advice for incoming students and then we'll we'll sign off for now. But hopefully, again, we will see you throughout the month at the rest of our virtual session. Yeah, th thanks again, uh, Jessica. You are, you're absolutely just an asset to, to Rowan, and I really appreciate what you're doing. So thank you so much for, for this session. Um, you know, my, my piece of advice is, uh, you know, don't, don't get lost in the journey. Uh, that it's so easy to think about, well, I've got to meet this deadline and that deadline, and I've got to get my schedule and I've got don't get lost in the journey. This, the, you know, this is an amazing time in your life. And yes, there, there are so many questions with COVID and, and other things, but it's the best time of your life. And, and, and I don't mean that trivially. Um, you know, enjoy this experience. Enjoy every moment of it. Uh, be the best student you can be. Do the right things at the right time. Uh, but, but don't miss the journey. Don't get so caught up in the business side that you don't appreciate uh, your fellow students, your fellow faculty members, your staff members. Um, Rowan is an incredible place. I'm not just saying it because I'm because I work here. I really, uh, really believe this in my soul. Uh, I came here because uh, it's an amazing place. It's just a, a great place for students. We're going to be engaged. We're going to care about you. We're going to we're going to be involved in your lives. So uh, don't lose sight of that journey. Have the best time of your life. Uh, be academically focused. Uh, do do what you need to do. Uh, do the right things at the right time. But uh, don't lose sight of the special opportunity and, and the journey. And, and it was kind of the stop and smell the roses. Well, you know, stop and stop and smell the roses because there there are some beautiful ones around here. And uh, I would also say selfishly, if if y'all are looking for any kind of mentor, hit me up. I would love to love to connect with you. Love to be engaged in your experience. Um, if you see me around campus, uh, please stop me, say hello. Um, really am, am passionate about students and what I do. So I will happily be any part of your life that you'll let me be. So thank you so much for being here today. It, it means the world to me. It, uh, I'm humbled that you're here and I really appreciate you taking this time. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. And I'll, I'll end on this real quick. I asked Kevin if you want to participate in one accepted or a virtual session for us and he said put me down for as many as you want i love doing this kind of thing so um kevin will be back on every week with us throughout the end of may if you guys are you know have more questions you just want to connect again we'll be here uh, but feel free to check out the rest of our event schedule it's the best way to stay connected at this point and we are so thrilled that you joined us today thank you for your excellent questions you guys made this an awesome session um congratulations again to our accepted students and we look forward to seeing you all again soon Thanks, thank everyone. you all so much bye guys